So we'll get started. It's 301. I'm sure a few other people will pop on as well. Um, but Pat, as always, thank you for taking your time out of your day to be able to sit here with me and have kind of a conversation mm -hmm. around just understanding your local market. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the first thing is to, there are a couple of people in here who are new, same with Akin. I'd love for you to just give a, a brief background of who you are, how long you've been in the industry, you know, maybe where your primary focus has been from a business perspective. Um, so my name is Pat Lowe. I've been in business since 1985. This 30-something years. <laughs> I stop counting at 30. Um, I, I lived in Wayne my entire life. Mm -hmm. So Wayne has always been my first market, but um, I do all the areas around here too, mm -hmm. as long as I'm comfortable with them. No, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, for today's call, you've lived in Wayne your whole life, you've built your reputation, you've built a lot of your business in Wayne, you mm -hmm. do business in other places, but mm -hmm. I think you're a great example and a great person to speak about on how to, for whether you're new, whether you've been in the business for a long time, how do you grow your business, how do you network in a given area, and what type of statistics and information should you know about an area when you're talking to clients and stuff like that? That's funny. I was thinking about this this morning. Like social media has mm -hmm. like taken everything to a different level, mm -hmm. really, with it, with with this market. And um, and being that I've lived here my whole life, and I went to school here, and I went to college here, and and there's so many people that I probably never would have talked to again in my life. But because of social media yeah. and putting you know certain things out there about myself and my life and my family and real estate and mm -hmm. it's always a fine balance mm -hmm. you know you don't want to just barrage them with real estate all the time or they'll stop listening so i have my puppies at home which i barrage <laughs> people with and I love looking but at, at least photos. yes and that they're gonna be sick of them soon too but there's certain things i think you just have to have a mix of it and it's really it it's worked out well for me i'd say in the last five years or so because i'm at the age where where my friends' parents are, are are either passing away or they're moving to assisted living mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And there's people that call me up that I don't even remember, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Mm -hmm. But they just say, oh, yeah, went to school together. We know that you're the real estate person. And not just in New Jersey, like throughout the country. Yeah. Throughout the country. Well, and I think that that brings me to something that Bill usually talks about, which is most people can only contain two things in their head on a given brand, a given, like, you know, mm -hmm. here it says if you think of toothpaste, you think of, Crest or Colgate, and beyond that, it's True. harder to think, you know, yeah. whether potato yeah. chips, I think, at least. The, the, what you just said is when people in this area and people that you know are looking to buy or sell, they think of you, mm -hmm. whether it's in this area, whether it's across the country. Mm -hmm. So what type of information, whether it's on social media, what type of items of value do you provide your clients, whether it's, you know, maybe something about about Wayne, it could be like that tap into tap into Wayne, like maybe there's articles you're sharing, what type of things or what type of value are you providing your clients to make sure they're up to date with things in the area? Well, I think what people seem to want to know the most is when they going in any town, not just Wayne, is they want to know about the schools. Mm -hmm. That's like the number one thing and the transportation. Yep. I think those are the two biggest things. So Wayne does have a lot to offer with that. I mean, we've always been known for our schools. Another interesting thing is that, you know, there, there's like there's hills and there's valley and people come with the the, the two high schools mm -hmm. and they'll come and they'll say i only want to be on this side i only want to be on that side and what i've learned over the years is i've seen those high schools flip back and forth like you know now now hills is the place to go mm -hmm. 10 years ago it was valley that was valley and it flips back and forth and people come in and they either have no children or they have a five-year-old and they're making a decision on a high school like 10 years from now Mm -hmm. So I'll tell people that all the time. Like you look look back at the stats, those schools. By the time your kid gets to high school, that's that's gonna flip again. Well, and that's an interesting thing, but it's also having a pulse on it's not just having a pulse on the market, it's having a pulse on the town. within the market, within the town. Yeah. Because to your point, what could have been the popular school 10 years ago, you have to educate if someone has kids in maybe kindergarten mm -hmm. that you know, okay, you might be making this decision today. But you're educating that okay maybe that's not going to be the case by the time i got to high school yeah um so how do you like where do you get that information is it just from being in the town is it just from conversations like what type of things should people look for in their in their area of focus that would provide them with that information well i think like with the transportation and the new york stuff i think that's important in any town yeah. like everybody yeah. seems to want to know that yeah. when you, where you can get to the bus where you can get train. to the train i mean and all that stuff you can look you can find Yep. The school stats too, I think you can find online. Um, but mostly it's it's just it's keeping up on things. 
like in articles when they come out and posts when they come out and you know with, with you know what's what school is better at the time and listening to people talk and yeah kids in school yeah and, and kind of really identifying what their needs are and mm -hmm. being able to provide information on that mm -hmm. so i have a question for you and, and and it's coming from a different perspective so let's say you're a new agent and let's say you didn't grow up in wayne let's mm -hmm. say somebody on this call grew up in or is uh, lives in Wayne, but they're focused on Patterson mm -hmm. for whatever reason. What yeah. types of things outside of school and transportation? Like, what advice would you give for somebody new going into a, a new area to build the level of expertise and just knowledge base that, that you've developed? Because, like I said, you've lived in the area, you've experienced, you went to school. So at this point, I could probably ask you anything about Wayne, anything about the college, anything about schools, and you would mm -hmm. probably know that inside and out. Mm -hmm. If you were, let's say, you moved to, I don't know. Where, where would you Wherever. like to move to? Yeah. yeah. If you want to move to Florida in, you know, five years. Yeah, what would I do? Like, what would you do? Yeah, if you got your sense. license in yeah. Florida, let's say, and you were starting over in somewhere in Florida, what would be a couple things that you would do to to kind of, I don't say gain an edge, but just gain an understanding of, of the area? I think you want to know is you, you, got, you want to see what's happening locally. Mm -hmm. You want to know what's going on with your town. You know, some of that can come from, um, the, the building departments, mm -hmm. the um, other other you know departments at the town, to know what's you know what's going on, maybe what's being built and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff, what's coming into your community. Um, so just getting an understanding of the community. Yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of that comes just from living your life and going out and talking to people, and you go to the store and you go to the kind of restaurant or this or that one. A lot of stuff comes from from that. Just yeah. Just living your life and 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 getting known as the real estate person. Yeah. which is key that's key to get when yeah. people think of real estate they think of that yeah. and that can be regardless of whether you're in wayne or whether you're exactly. in florida it's just gaining yeah. that and i think with that what pat just said which is very important is it's all about having those real estate conversations mm -hmm. um every single day yeah so you know really making sure that you're putting yourself out there whether you were to move somewhere and you were to put yourself in a different place and it, it reminds me of when we were at a family reunion and Chris Juarez, who's a top agent out, um, and I believe Washington, that might be where Ben Kinney is, but Chris Juarez had said he was uh, visiting, I think, Costa Rica or somewhere, and he was having a really good time, and he was like, what if we just, like, moved? Uh, what if we came back? What if, what if my business just, like, all of a sudden in Washington, like, what if it fell apart? Mm -hmm. and, his, and his wife was like, well, you'll move somewhere else. Somewhere. Like, you know how to build a business, and that's through having real estate conversations. That's just through putting yourself out there, like, the, the things that Pat's mentioning, whether you're doing it here, whether you move, whether you're like, the process stays the same. It's just about understanding those key components of an area. And people want to have real estate conversations. Exactly. If you tell somebody you're in real estate, they, they have a million questions for you. Whether you're meeting them for the first time, they have no idea who you are. Yep. You know, what's the market like? You know, what's this? It's going up or down? What's going to happen? But, but, and, and it's important too that, that, you become that person in your community. Mm -hmm. You know, an example I, I like to use is, is my cousin owned a wine bar in Pompton Lakes like 10 years ago. Yeah. And I used to go in and I used to pull so much business out of that bar. Yeah. And my cousin who was also a realtor, but he had the bar. So the people looked at him as the, the guy that owned the wine bar that had his real estate license. Yeah. And they looked at me as the realtor. Yeah. And he would get mad because they everybody would be listing their houses with me. Yeah. But it's perception. Perception is reality. It is. Yeah. Well, and that's why you know for those of you who are doing this dual career, just because you're doing another job doesn't mean they can't also see you as a realtor. But it's important to be able to disassociate the two. Mm -hmm. If you are a teacher, that people don't look and say, "Oh, well, he's the teacher or she is the soccer coach." Yeah. You want to say she is the realtor. Yeah. yeah and definitely. and that's going to be the important thing as opposed as. In addition to knowing your community, it's making sure that people associate you with being the knowledge base for a specific community. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to, I actually had a question written down and you kind of uh, led me to this, which is what questions do you get asked the most from clients and what information do they want to know? What's the market like? Even before it went crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, what's my house worth? What do you think my house is worth? No, I've never been in your house. You know, we're at stop and shop. Yeah. You know, you know, what's my house worth? What do you think it's going to do? You think we're in for another crash? Is you know, well, well, right now even more than ever mm -hmm. because everything. I don't want to say it's volatile, but I mean it's been up for a long time. It yeah. Has. Yeah. Well, and every time that I think there's been more and more listings come on, 
either through the Delta variant and working with people, do I want to listen? Like, yeah. Because when the pandemic first started, we're kind of shifting into a buyer's market. And then that kind of like stopped because then all the, you know, we shut down the world for yeah. two months and then people yeah. didn't want to list their house and then mm -hmm. more buyers than, than listing. So mm -hmm. how would you answer, like when someone's asking, how's the market? Like what, what are you like for new or on the call? How are you answering that question? Like if someone were to say that to you right now. I mean, the market's great. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very active. And if someone said, like, what, yeah. what happened six months from now? Obviously What's going to happen six months from now? I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it, but I mean, rates are still down. Mm -hmm. Inventory is still low. Yep. You know, we're, I, we seem like we're going to go into the fall in the same market. What's going to happen next year? I mean, who knows? COVID, who knows? There's so many variables. You don't really you know. Can't but predict. You can't predict. Yeah. yeah. And, and as I say, I wish I did, you know, especially when the market's down, like I wish I had a crystal ball to know, did we hit the top, did we hit the bottom? Yeah. You don't know that stuff until, it happens. until, until after it happens. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. looking back at yeah. it. When you know <laughs> so we were at the peak or, oh, we were at the bottom. Exactly. Yeah, you realize it after the fact. Yeah. Um, but is it a good time to sell? If they ask me, it's a good time to sell? Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's a better time to sell if you have somewhere to go. Yeah. You know, if you have another house somewhere yeah, you're, you're or a rental, or yeah, that then it's a really good time yeah. to sell. If you're looking to buy, yeah, that's a little, a little, a little more different. challenging right now. Well, so what would you say, um, like when I'm when I'm looking at the MLS, like for people who are looking to get into a specific area or dominate a local area, what type of information, what type of statistics, what type of you know past sales, active lists, like what are you looking for on the MLS to just kind of you know, keep in tune with what's going on. So when you're having this conversation with other people to stop and shop. Oh, like, like what kind of stuff yeah, would you be researching? Yeah. What should you be looking at? Um, I'd be looking at days on the market. Mm -hmm. I'd be always looking to see, um, like the pendings, I always look to see if they say highest invest in them. Mm -hmm. So you know if they're selling over. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just educating yourself on the MLS. I mean, I don't do it, I still do it, but not to the extent that I did it before. I'd be on the MLS probably eight hours a day. Yeah. Not, maybe maybe 12 to 13 hours, because I'd be here, then I'd be home and yeah. I'd be looking stuff up and, yeah. and you know, stalking people and, and you yeah. know, look at that. That's how I always tell people how to work the MLS. You look at look at your street yeah. and then look at your neighbors and see what they're paying tax and see what you're paying tax. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I get it. I yeah. get how this works. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think so, and you're looking specifically Mostly in Wayne, right? Like when you're looking at your pro at the properties you're looking at, you're looking at what's selling in your area. Yeah, I'm looking all around this area though. Mm -hmm. But I gotta say, everyone that that goes, everyone that closes in Wayne, I open it up to see who sold it. Yep, and for how much? <laughs> and for how much? <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone. I don't just stand by them. Every single one, I'll open up. Yeah, because I want to know who's doing the business. Yeah, and you don't know. We see that the buyer's agent side of who's doing the business unless you open up the sold listing and see the buyer's name on it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and GMLS versus, and GMLS yeah. you can a lot of times get more information than you can on the GSMLS. Mm -hmm. um, but no, that's that's important information when you're going to look for it. Well, it is, it is, because all of a sudden and a where name pops name up from? and another name, yeah. no, I'm talking about, I'm talking, not the buyer, I'm oh. talking about the buyer's agent, Got it. the buyer's Got it. agent. Got like, it. I want to know, like, who's this person? I don't know who this is. Now, all of a sudden, I've seen they've sold three properties. Yeah. Like, like, I want to know who this yeah. person is and now. What are, where yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> where did they you, come from? Are yeah. you also looking at, so kind of where I was going to as well, like where buyers are coming from? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and you don't get that. You get that from New Jersey. New Jersey more than just New Jersey. Because you know what? Um, sellers want to know that now more than ever. Yeah. They, they think everyone's coming from New York. Yeah. And and when you look at it, there's a lot of them coming from New York. You're right. Absolutely. But, but yeah, I, I like to know where they came from too. Yeah. And I, well, I think it also helps when you're on an appointment to say, look, we're in an office where we have people doing business in Hudson County, Burton County, Union County. So people have buyers that are looking to move in this area. So yeah. for, for someone to have a more of a reason to want to list with a Keller Williams Prosperity agent, we do have a big network of people uh, that can funnel into different areas. And now we have the people from this area pushing north to Sparta. Exactly, yep, with the Sparta yeah. opening, it's, it's, it's another avenue yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to shift gears a little bit from a vendor perspective, like meaning like, what type of relationships are you building with people in the local community? It could be electricians, it could be plumbers, it could be like, what does your, like, do you have like a preferred that's vendor a, list? That's a big part of my business. Okay. I do. I do. I have it in writing and I, and I give it to them at the listing, but, but I've always been like the, 
the go-to person looking for, you know, the inspections, the electrician, need a plumber, you know, need an oil tank guy. I've, I've had those relationships for years and it's, and it's constantly changing too. Yeah. Like people are getting pushed out and then other people are coming in. Now, how did you form those relationships? Did you connect with someone and they just do a good job yeah. and then they just continue to get Absolutely. your business? Absolutely. Like I just got an electrician that came actually from, from Ron's dad here. Okay. I need an electrician about a month ago and I've sent him three jobs in the last probably 10 days or so. Because you know, when I call, he comes. Yeah. And you know, same with lenders, yep. you know, same with, with yeah, it, it's important because they know that like my cleaning guy he says that all the time that I refer out. He's like, oh, and Pat calls, I jump. <laughs> <laughs> but it's well, important because that's what the sellers want. It is. Yeah. Well, and the buyers, well, the buyers. I was going to say, after somebody moves into a house, they're invariably going to have an issue with something. Mm -hmm. And you still want to be the go-to person because if the average person buys a house every seven years, throughout those seven years, you A, want to get referrals from them, mm -hmm. but B, when something happens with their house, you want them to say, hey, Pat, like, I really need a, a plumber or yeah. oh, my air conditioner broke. Who do you recommend mm -hmm. for, for this? You want to be that person, Definitely. that resource. Because Definitely. if you're not providing value, then seven years goes by and they're going to wait, I, I sold the Pat, but, you know, yeah. my cousin's friend also yeah. had a license. You know, so it, it, it's important to make sure you're always providing value. Mm -hmm. And a part of that is um, having those vendors. Absolutely. Now, what about, you had mentioned before, just understanding, or maybe understand, but be in relationship with the municipality from the standpoint, look, you might need to know zoning or different mm -hmm. things. Like what type of relationship, what type of conversations might you have with the municipality? Like what are some things that they could provide you that is specific to that local area? Oh, I mean, I think in any area, I mean, I was down the zoning department this, just uh, last week, mm -hmm. meeting with them over a property that I have that might have a subdivision. Is it a subdivision? Is it a subdivision? It's in flood. Is it flood? Is it floodway? Like it was very, pretty complicated mm -hmm. conversation. So, um, and then I'm constantly at the building department for, for different things. I usually, and, and I, I don't say everyone does this, but often I'll go down there to, to work on closing permits for my sellers, mm -hmm. just because I want that relationship with them down there. Yeah. And, and I've had it for years. And there was a whole new shift of people that came in like two years ago and I have that whole relationship there. And so when things get stuck and we can't get the COs in time, I have their cell numbers. Yep. And well, then, I'm sure and, that helps. Like, not that yeah. they would prioritize you over someone else, but I got that relationship to yes. help. <laughs> it helps. It helps. We send, we send them sandwiches a couple yeah. times a year, cookies yeah. at Christmas. Yeah. 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 That's a good relationship to have in any town. For sure. And if they like you, then they're going to, they're going to be more responsive. Like you said. Gonna, they, they push it up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and, and it's, look, that's all part of being the realtor of choice. Cause they know exactly. that, look, if, 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 they're using you, they're going to get the quickest and the mm -hmm. fastest responses. They're going to get uh, the information the fastest uh, way possible. And they get referrals from them. Yeah. And I also get referrals from them too. So. Okay. Well, it's, uh, you know, that was really the questions that I had for you. Mm -hmm. uh, what I wanted to do was anyone who's plugged in or Athman over here, if you have questions for Pat, just anything on, you know, information about, you know, uh, what you should be doing in your local communities or local. Well, Actually, just one other thing, you are also active in your local community as well with different things, like, yeah. you know, through the culture committee, obviously, mm -hmm. one, but two, you did stuff well before yeah. you were even with Keller Williams. So how yeah. important is that to just give back to your local community as well? That was very important. It's the way to be known again. And yeah, just, you know. Not that you're doing it for selfish reasons, but it comes back to you. Well, no, you're doing it because you want to, but yeah. you're also putting yourself out there yeah. in different groups of people Absolutely. who also just you know, mm -hmm. you're building relationships. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and the bottom line is picking what you like doing and, you know, supporting a cause that you want to support, but just like it has to, you're in front of more people. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're in, in real estate and you're afraid to approach people, you're afraid to reach out to people, you're going to really struggle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that's just, that's just the, the reality mm -hmm. um, because you can leverage social media to an extent, but a big part of it, I feel like it has to, well, I feel like it has to be done face to face. Yeah. Social media can enhance your relationship and can mm -hmm. enhance what you're doing, but it can't replace that face to face human mm -hmm. component. Otherwise you're really going to just struggle. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to do now is I wanted to spend, you know, give you guys the opportunity. Are there questions that you have for Pat that you wanted to know about what she's doing uh, in her local market? Um, 
what if there is feel free to unmute yourself feel free to put a comment in the chat feel free to raise your hand over there in the corner um one thing while you guys are thinking one thing that will be helping um, all of our Wayne agents and especially as well is we are officially um, last 12 months number one in closed volume in Wayne um, and we're number two in units however we're like pretty I'm going to say significantly, but we're healthily ahead uh, year to date number one mm -hmm. in units so it's only a matter of time till we're number one um, in Wayne so I say that because for those of you on here if you live in Pequannock if you live in Pompton Plains, if you live in Sparta, like we have a presence in a lot of different places. So feel free to reach out to myself or Christina to provide the stats, but these stats are something that will help Pat now that we're number one in his vibe. Because now Coldwell Bankers, I'd say that their calling card of, oh, we're number one in Wayne, that's not Yeah, those, that, anymore. those stats are great. You know, yeah. I'm always looking for those stats. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I can't yeah. tell you how excited I was yeah. when I pulled the reports two months ago. I said, wow, you're to date. We're number one in both. And then last month I saw we're number one in uh, volume. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, you know, we're number five in all the MLS and units, number eight now in volume. Like we're steadily increasing. So these numbers are only going to be more impressive as the days go by. Um, and these numbers and statistics only help people in presentation. You know, I like what Ronnie said when we first started this in the first year when we were, I don't remember what we were, but yeah. we were getting up there. And he's like, and we're just babies. We're like toddlers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the back of we're only like yes. two and a half years yeah. going on it's three amazing. years. It's, it's truly incredible. Um, and it just, it, it makes me passionate because look, number one is my goal is to make sure everyone in our office does as much business as they can and does it the right way. Uh, but we're on the path of, you know, just getting there. And, and being uh, tops in all MLS in specific towns, we're number one in Kenilad. Uh, you know, there's a, we're going to have a, a, a point where you're going to look at a lot of counties and zip codes in Passaic County in our area, and no one's going to have better statistics than us. So anyone, whether, and just one other thing, like for Pat, who's had 30 plus years in, in the business, like she can use her own personal stats and her own personal uh, experience. But for those who are new or newer, that's where you really have to rely and leverage our office stats. Because you, you know, not that, you know, there's different scripts that whether like, if someone asks you how long you've been in the business, there's different scripts that you can use to counteract that no matter how long you've been in the business. But if you're saying you're part of a team of, or an office, that is number one in, in weight and volume, or we're number five out of 1300 offices in the MLS. Like, regardless of how long you've been in the business, you just mm -hmm. leverage our stats. I use them all the time. Yeah. I use them before I use my own. Yeah. Actually. Well, and that's where once you get to a point, like, you yeah. look and see which stats are better. Like, because yeah. Christina does the language of real estate stats every month, which is last 12 months versus previous 12 months. If your personal stats are better, you use those. If the office stats are better, you use the office. Like no matter what you're doing, just you use whatever the best statistics are and puts mm -hmm. you in the best position to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, all right, are there any chat messages, Christina? I couldn't see. Um, doesn't look like it. Okay. So I hope that this was an informative session. I think this was, I, I just want to say thank you, Pat, for taking time mm -hmm. out of your schedule. Um, you know, I think that that was a, a lot of really good tactical information just for those of you who are looking to get into a specific area or specific market um, to follow through with. So um, we'll be posting this recording on Facebook. So, you know, if you, if any of you want to watch it again, I'm sure we'll have a, a, a greater audience as well. Um, but thank you, Pat, uh, for your time today. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.